pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, could I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Christine Adamczak. Here. Councilmember Linda Hammer. Here. Councilmember Michael Jasinski. Here. Councilmember Gerald Kaminsky. Present. Councilmember Brian Nowak. Present. Councilmember Brian Polarski. Present. Supervisor Benchkowski. Here. Okay. Seven present tonight. Um, first uh, item of discussion is the police and court generator. Paul Polarski and Mark Biefeld from the engineering department are here tonight. Hello, everyone. Kim, could you pull up a couple emails for me? Attachments. Um, it's there's a map and a there's a map and a couple of uh, pages of reference. So while Kim's doing that, um, back in uh, mid February uh, of this year, I think we all know we had a power outage um, that was detrimental to the police department. Um, which, which caused several issues. The, the, the problem was with the generator. When the power went out, the generator kicked on, but shortly thereafter, uh, it ceased. So unfortunately, we've been, we've been putting some money into this thing to keep it operating. It's a 550 kW, it's a big machine um, to service that facility. To date, uh, again, we've been having a couple things go wrong. I guess we can attribute it to a vehicle that we've owned. Uh, that's one way to look at it. Um, yeah, this is the wrong one, Kim. It's the other one that we sent you. I'll be back with you in just a minute. So to date, we have about $30,000 into fixing this thing. Uh, it's probably not a number anybody wants to hear. Um, but unfortunately, it is what it is. So there's things we had. The, the, the latest thing that happened was we had to get a radiator fixed because they had to pull it out, send it down to Erie, Pennsylvania to get repaired. Um, we had some fuel issues that we had taken care of. Is this the end? We don't know. But in the interim, uh, there's a board of us got together, including the chief, myself, uh, a team from uh, Nussbaumer and Clark, and the Penn Power people who service it. Um, we put our heads together. Uh, Jay Zagoda's with us today. He's, he's from Nussbaumer and Clark, is our electrical engineer. Um, he's been diligent on, on keeping on track. Um, if you go to, just go to the next page. So what Jay put together was three options um, of what we can do. And I think as a consensus, we settled on option number. We'll be happy to forward this along to you after we're done with this meeting. Um, option number three, um, sorry, can you just go to the next page? There's like a site map. And Mark, if you can be my, my hand here. So what this is, what you're looking at is the police and court building on your left-hand side. Mark, point, so the existing generator is highlighted there in yellow. Um, what we're proposing to do is to add a whole new generator to service the police building. Now, that, now it's, it's a redundant in nature. This is very common in municipalities with law enforcement because in just such an occasion where one should shut down, you need something to back up the other. So we're proposing to put a new one, 150 kW natural gas power generator, substantially smaller than the one we have now, um, that will be on the north side of the building uh, where the current parking lot is. There's just a few vehicles there now. That will be exclusive to the police department. Now we want to keep the 550, the one existing one, still in, still in place as a backup generator to this new one that we're proposing. Now in addition, the other dark lines that you see, we would run a line to town hall. So that would be a generator, and I'll, I'll try to be, speak English with this, if for instance the power should go out on this campus. The new generator at the top will service the police building, the old one will service the town hall. If for some if for some reason the new one goes down, then the police have the backup of the existing one that they're currently using now. Um, I hope that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So when when that was sized when that was sized initially based on the size of the building and what we thought was the output that would be required for the size, uh, it was oversized. So what happened? Is this thing work? You guys hear me all right? It it's going in and yeah, out. Yeah, it's kind of in and out. I don't know. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah, maybe you're turning your head. So when I turn my head, 
Okay, so anyway, <laughs> one is, you got you, like you got a handheld one, I could do so much better. You can't turn your head <laughs> Okay, so anyway, um, when, when we check with, check with um, NYSEG, NYSEG gives us an actual use of power um, during the course of the year. So we picked the time of the year when it was in most need and we realized that 150 kW, which is based on the size of the unit, would be adequate for this building. So that being said, that's why Jadis and Mark had mentioned that that existing unit will service both buildings. So if it needed to, if the new one for some reason went down, that existing one would service town hall and would service the police building. Now, there is some good news to this, I guess. We had budgeted for ARPA a brand new generator for town hall. We put in 250,000 for a budget for that alone. We can utilize this towards the redundant generator that we're proposing for the police building. Now, will it service, will it take care of all the costs? We're not 100% sure, but we probably think it's gonna go over by about, by about 100,000 more than what we proposed. But unfortunately, we, we can't have this happen again. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the chief can attribute how, how much that potentially hurt at the time that that had, that had gone down. Um, we're just looking to keep you in the loop. I'm, I'm kinda hoping that we have your blessing here tonight. The next step we do is get an actual design and then go out for some competitive bids to do this. Um, again, we beat this to death and we kind of looked at different ways and different options to handle it. Again, we'll, we'll send this to you. There's a couple other options that's not worth talking about right now. Um, but I hope this makes a lot of sense to you guys. And um, I brought the technical guy with me. If you guys have any questions that I can't answer, I'll be happy to, to listen. Um, I, and I'm, I'm gonna ask the council members to raise your hand when you wanna talk, but my first question is so, just to reiterate, we're not going to get a new one for town hall then. Correct. Okay, that's good because then we were looking for space for it. And yes. Okay. Yes. And then this new one will service the police, and then the old one will service both. Correct. Okay. Correct. Any council member, uh, council member Jasinski? How long will the whole transition take? Um, once we get to bid, I mean, we've been having a problem getting generators, and I think it's gotten a little bit better. Jay, what what do we get now for for generator delivery? So, so I guess to, just to kind of add to that, if, if we're looking, if, if we have your approval to press on to the next step, um, we would get it designed. I think Jay's got a, got a good grasp on what needs to be done design-wise. By the time we get it out to bid, accept bids, um, award contracts, shop drawing review, order, I mean, we're, we're, we're probably a year out. I mean, probably 10 months to a year out. So we, we kind of need to get moving on. We, and we currently have a backup generator right now that's not for free. I mean, we did have a free month on it, but unfortunately, I think we 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 need to we need to keep it. I mean, we, you know, the the time lost between going to get one while ours currently shut down is is catastrophic. For the, and that's a real word to use in this case, you know. You know, um, Jay, they can't hear you on the YouTube, you. so you might have to, if you, I didn't realize you were gonna speak that much, so yeah. Yeah, with, uh, with the police station, you've gotta realize it, it's critical. If, if they're down for an hour, it affects dispatch, people calling in for emergencies. It also affects anything with the holding cells. All, those, all the controls in the holding cells are electronic and, and the monitor and the safety of the, okay. the, the, the people that are confined I might have in to that cut building. You off. I might have to cut you off with this stuff because we that sounds like security issues, so okay. we don't want that out there. So I, I'll have That's the right. chief take, a, yeah. take over. So, and it is common in, in a police station to have redundant generators. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done several of them for other communities around here where we actually have redundant generators to handle it in case one generator is down for service or fails, the other one will keep the critical load Yes, up. I think that's a good idea. Okay, thank you, Jay. Chief? Yeah, 
If I can real quick, uh, besides the, the critical nature of 911 and our call center uh, controlling the police and fire radios and answering 911, uh, IT has made a significant investment in putting their equipment in our building because of the fact that the critical nature of the power need in our building is the least, least likely to go down. So when, when we did suffer the, uh, the outage in February, that severely negatively affected uh, IT. So this redundancy, you know, not only ensures the emergency communication, but in fact, our entire network, uh, when it comes to IT supply at work mm -hmm. in our town. Uh, and, and it addresses the issue of the generator at, at town hall too. It just seemed to really make a good idea, a good sense to have that redundancy, mm -hmm. two different fuel sources, one's natural gas, one's diesel, and then, um, you know, addressing the issues of the aging generator in this building too, so. Uh, council members, council member Noack. I think my question's for you. Uh, yeah. The current capacity on what we have is 550 kW. What are we looking at for the replacement? Is it the same, is it different? Uh, it's uh, substantially smaller, it's 150 kW. I, th I think what I was trying to explain, and may, may come out muddy, um, when, when you design it for a new building, uh, it's a bit of a guessing game. But for the life of the building was, was built in 2011-2012, uh, um, we're now able to see what is the current use of that facility, how much power does it really draw. And we did get that information from NYSEG, and Jay's comfortable, which I'm comfortable with Jay. Uh, it was like, I think like 97 kW, Jay was a demand. So we're sizing it accordingly at the 150 mark, which when you get into that size, it's a more efficient generator because we use natural gas. And placing it um, on the north side of the police building, it's pretty close to the gas service. So we're trying to place it in a strategic area that's also cost effective. That kind of answers my question because I was thinking about, you know, current usage and can we absorb new, new demand and it sounds like we have space to do that. Correct. Correct. Any other council members? C council member Kaminsky? Yeah, Paul, I, I think you and I talked about this just so everybody else knows about it. I've been doing some digging since we talked mm -hmm. to. <coughs> and it's, uh, it was really kind of disappointing, I think, from day one, that nobody ever ran that generator even as long as it ran during the storm when it quit. Right. I think, what did we run it, 14, 16 hours last week, Monday? Yeah, I, I, I think it was a 12-hour low test, John. You can attest to that, right? You, you know, this, this has been talked about quite a bit. So the engineering department draws up a maintenance contract for all of our generators except for the main pump station. That's, that's a separate entity. It's, a, it's quite a larger generator, I think 900 kW. Um, so we, we drew up a, it's like a 30, 30 point check on the generators. Not once have we ever heard that, hey, maybe we should run a full load test. I mean, we're, you know, we're definitely learning a lot of lessons here as we, as we progress. Did we ever anticipate this happening? Should this have happened to a generator? Probably not. I mean, I talked to their, I talked to Penn Power's maintenance guy. He's their number one service guy. And I asked the question blunt, is, is this common? He's no, it's not, it's not common. But for the cost of a new generator to replace that one in kind, you're looking at about 150 to 200 thousand dollars just for the generator, just to do that. So, it, you know, we've all had issues with our vehicles. We have issues with our mechanical stuff at home, and we make the repairs and we move on. The life expectancy, and the Jake can attest, is usually 20 to 25 years on these generators. We're at year number 10, 11. So this thing's not ready to be put to bed yet. Yeah, li life-wise, it's not even close. But the biggest point I was making, what I'd like to see down the road. I don't care what we put in there. You can't run them for 30 minutes and guarantee everything. If we would not have run that thing last Monday for those hours, would we ever known about the radiator leaking until the next emergency? I, Probably I agree. not. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, I've done enough work on this stuff where I've had equipment sitting in my shop in days trying to get it to quit. Sure. You know, it can be an absolute nightmare, and that's why I said if you don't get enough time on it, you're never going to know it. Right. I think the storm, it ran, what, originally two hours? Is that correct? Say Some that again, Chair? Somewhere thereabouts. Uh, I'm sorry, you have to say that again. No, it only ran for about two hours. Two hours, yes. Yeah, quit. shut down, correct. Yes, I'm yeah, sorry. Uh, maybe we ought to look at every quarter or something running that thing for a day, loaded. Well, I, Jay, I think uh, Penn Power and actually MTU, which was the, it's the manufacturer of the generator, I think, I think they recommend, is it one full load test a year or two? At least one full load test, at least one full load test per year, um, especially on the bigger ones. We have a lot of pump stations that are critical that, that we need to keep the residents safe as that as well. I mean, it's... There's a lot of things that are that are very important that that these generators are protecting. Yeah, because a lot of things more goes wrong when it sits rather than when it. Yes. Sits. Yeah. And and you know, uh, as you guys know, courtesy of the ARPA funding, 
you know, we're close to getting the record center squared away. We have some standalones for our smaller pump stations on Genesee Street. And uh, it, it, it's, it's something that we have to take into account. Uh, Jared, just so you know, uh, that with the sewer district, I work with them, and we monitor the power outages and how much the, those stations go on load. If for some reason we look at it and we say it only ran two hours under load, we go out, we kill the main power on a day, and we let that generator run for a day. So we are, we're exercised. There's a certain number of generators in the town that are exercised at full load. Plant five in Chic, the, the main sewage pump station, that probably runs full load six, seven times a year. And it's done during storms, and it's, it's at maximum demand. I mean, we're pumping 750, 800 kW out of that generator a couple times a year for an extended period of time because the, the power to, to that station is bad and it browns out and we can't have the pumps going on and off. Right. So we go on generator automatically there. Yeah, I do that with my own home generator too. And I think I learned a lesson with this one too. I'm gonna do it more often. Sure. Okay, um, so the next item is so the town hall. Dan, can I stop you there? So again, we're, we're always looking for answers because we're always looking to progress, but do we have the boards kind of go ahead to progress with getting to the next next stage Does of this? Does anybody have any questions? Because I don't want to do a formal vote tonight. We don't have a re resolution in front of us. So. Right. Well, well, yeah. I, so any, does anybody object to not moving forward with this? I would move forward then, Paul, and, you know, then if anybody has some objections. Okay. Very good. So, so at the next board meeting will be, um, well, maybe not the next one, but uh, I'm talking no, I'm talking directly into it now. <laughs> yeah, you are, and we can't hear you. No. Is the green light How's on? How's that? Yeah, green light's on, yeah. Wait, he said to wait one second. Is that any better? There, it's kind of in and out, right? Kim, could you pull up the other one you had originally? Am I still being intermittent? Yeah, right, Anthony, it's. This is why it would have been nice to be in the courtroom to have that. One, two, one. Thank you, yeah. One, two. There yeah, so maybe it's just a loose wire. Yep. Okay, so the next one, um, probably not so easy, but this, this started way back when, prior to us committing with ARPA spending to do the whole town hall. So I think it started with the noise we hear behind us and getting council chambers squared away. Jerry and I were involved. Uh, I brought in a couple of uh, local um, HVAC companies to get us proposals. And then all of a sudden we're looking for a place to spend ARPA money and it made a lot of sense. We had an opportunity. So at that time we really didn't know budget wise what we were talking about, so we had brought in a uh, the, the firm of Wendell, um, which if you can look at the very top, so they gave us, they gave us two, two separate proposals. The one that was preferred was a little bit more than the other. That being said, one was 750, the VRS system um, is $850,000. So that's what we budgeted. So that's all we knew going in. Um, unfortunately, after that transpired and we pressed on and we took it to the, to the, to the design phase, um, we, you know, our, our old friend asbestos turned up again. And unfortunately, it's critical to where everything's going. So there's some ceilings uh, in, in a couple offices in this building that we have to tend to. And unfortunately, about 80% of our ceilings have to be demolished in order to get the new overhead uh, HVAC system in place. Um, it was a very good design. We're very happy with, with the company that we work with. Uh, they're very dil diligent in what they do. He's actually available I believe he's on a Zoom call. If any questions come, we can deal with him in just a minute. So as we progressed, um, if you look at the uh, bullet point number two, LaBella provides a cost breakdown. So this had to be broken up into three separate prime contracts. Now we don't do that very much because we don't hit that million dollar mark. We did it with the police building. So we had to break it up into HVAC, electrical, and then, and then general construction. So they gave us a budget of 1.2. Now how did that climb? Well. We added $200,000 with just asbestos removal. So we're, we're, we went from 850 to over a million. In the time, and that was done in May of 22. So in that time, 
between May of 22 and February, as we all know, things started to go crazy and prices started to escalate. That got us into the 1.2 category. So already we're thinking, even before we're going to bid that we're over budget, but we're just too far in, we need to get this done, we need to send this out. The bids came in, uh, we had three reputable contractors, three separate primes that I would use any day of the week for any project. We were very fortunate in that respect. The unfortunate part is our total cost came in at 1.47. Again, budgeted for 850, total cost 1.47, we're 621 over budget. Now, we, we did our due diligence, and that's why we, we really couldn't award this till we had this discussion. Um, we talked to the general contractor, there's some ways that we can trim the fat, probably knock about $75,000 off this thing relatively painlessly. That doesn't hurt the project. That's not the case with the HVAC and the electrical. Uh, there's not much you can cut without really deviating from the purpose and, the, and, the, and the, you know, how the project wants to be taken care of. I've, I've been here a long time, and, and I don't want to get on a soapbox, but we, we, we've done things based on dollars in the past. Um, and it's sometimes it's not the right way to go. This is ARPA funded. Now, mind you, we, we did put some money away in a contingency account. Um, at the very, if you recall, we, we left that chunk of money, we kind of put it aside. I talked to Mark Crystal earlier today, um, and kind of how we can, how we can uh, manipulate dollars in different respects to help this and to help push this through. It, it's our opinion with engineering department that this project goes. Yes, we're over budget, I completely agree. This is ARPA funding, this is monies. I don't think we would ever see this. I don't think the town would ever fund this kind of a project because there are too many more important things that, that need our attention. Brian just mentioned to me earlier that this has been on the docket since 19, the 1970s. The um, time that I yeah, so you know these things have been running. There's, there, there's no more replacement parts for these things, these, these PTAC units. You can't get parts, something needs to be done. Um, so I guess I'm looking for your blessing. Uh, is it, does it surprise me? And I, you know, and I should say too, why the jump from 1.2 to 1.4? Well, Jerry, we had this conversation a couple days ago. I mean, cost of construction, and Mark Crystal can attest, he's at 28% in difference in cost in the course of a year. So this is about a 30% increase. It's not gonna get any better, right? If we bid it out again, it's not gonna get better. It, it might even get worse. Um, we don't know that for sure. Again, I would love to see this go through because we have one shot at doing it. What also makes this a little bit more expensive too is we need to do it in phases. Uh, we talked to IT in depth. To get the people out of this building is, it's, it's chaotic. And I think, you know, we haven't figured out what, what to do with Brian Krause's office. We think maybe we're just gonna put a match in there and we'll start from scratch. But we need to move him to other parts of the floor and kind of get people out of here. So we're doing it floor at a time, basement floor, first floor, second floor. And then we're gonna progress that way. Well, that costs a little bit more money because it's gonna take more time. That's figured into this bid. So one of the conversations we had had was, can we do this in one phase? We could save a pretty decent amount of money, but then IT kind of put the, put the nail in the coffin and said it's not really, it's not conducive to do that um, because of everything that everybody does. Can some people work remotely? Yeah, maybe, but some people can't. Uh, you can't really do town clerk remotely. And there's other offices and things that we had talked about. It, the, the, the consensus, especially with IT, who's gonna be, who's gonna be our right hand on this project, uh, and we talked about it for quite a while. Um, it, it's not, again, it's not very conducive for this project. There again, that's why we figured it in phases. It's bid that way. Uh, there's no hidden costs. One other thing I wanted to discuss before the questions arise, and I did hear this, I wasn't here for the last meeting, um, but I did hear that there was talks about the potential of moving council meetings or town board meetings back into courtroom three. Now mind you, this design was not with that in mind. The design, the current design of the HVAC system was to keep this um, as council chambers and have town board meetings here. If, if we're gonna think about moving, this plan doesn't work. We need to reinvent the wheel for this portion of the world. Um, we talked about that. We talked about moving back in December of last year and it, it was the consensus of the board that we just bring Rachel over and put her downstairs and everything else was off the table. So I just wanted to bring that up if that's mm -hmm. coming up later in conversations, I just wanted to be heard on that. Uh, any questions, I'd be happy to answer, yeah. Well, wait a minute, I'll, I'm sorry. Can I, yeah, I'll sure. take control here. Um, I need to ask sure. questions first. I'm sorry. Um, my question would be, the con 
what is the contingency account? Is that the one we just put bond money in? Or? No, no. So actually, when um, there was X amount of dollars in the ARPA, ARPA funding, mm -hmm. and I believe that there was a um, there was a, a good chunk of change remaining. Brian, you can help me out with that okay, number. Okay, so you're saying there's some remaining. It's it's ARPA. remaining ARPA funding that was not spoken for per mm -hmm. se, not specifically. So it was again That's we we explained that because things have been going up, we've noticed that it was a wise decision to put it in a contingency account in case things like this happen. I mean, I would never go through it. So if, if the intent is to move forward, I'd come back to the board at the, at the next board meeting at the time that we'd like to award the bids and let you know what the plan is and how we intend to move some monies around to pay for these things. Yeah, I would have to sit down with Brian Krause yeah. and figure out yes. where we're gonna find this money yep. um, so that it's not a heavy lift for the taxpayers. Understood. So, um, so I'm going to need a little time with that. Um, so now, uh, Council Member Jasinski. Yes, we obviously know that this is utmost urgency to get this done. Um, with the current estimates you got, you said you're 30% over budget. Are you confident that there may not be any change orders on top of that? Well, we actually bit, we, we actually build in contingency funds in the contracts as well. So based on the size of the prime contract, like the highest bid in here was the HVAC portion. So we have $20,000 built in there for a, a, a contingency account. We don't anticipate any change orders. They, again, the, the, the design professionals did their due diligence and they popped open ceiling tiles. Um, I don't know if you guys have been down in the old tax office. Once the ceiling was removed, all the spaghetti started to drape over and you see what was going on. Um, but we built in contingency amounts for each prime contract to cover any kind of change order costs. So I feel pretty confident today, again, the, you know, age of the building aside, I feel confident that the contingency amounts that we have for each prime contract will cover the change, any change orders. Okay, um, Council Member Hammer. Paul, I remember mentioning to you guys that there was a grant out there from NYSERDA. Uh, Jason Kulisewski has yes. told me about it. Now that additional money, not the money we used before for right. the charging station and the car. Correct. So I, I mean, it's for energy. Yes. Possibly we could get, you know, some funding that would help with this project. Yeah, I'd, I'd actually, uh, uh, Rick Coburn and I had dealt with Jason Kulishevsky originally, so I, I did get to know him on a personal level. I, w I will reach out to him okay. and to see okay. if, if in fact, we, yeah, yeah, and thank you for sending that. But yeah, if, if that's at all, you know, one of the categories that we can utilize that, I'm not sure if it would apply, but I'll, but I'll make the call and find out and I'll get back to you. Council Member Kaminsky. Paul, and I don't know if we had discussed it, and I don't know if everybody realizes that all these units are water-cooled. The meter mm -hmm. is running. Yep. We're going to save money on water, and we're going to save a heck of a lot of money on electricity. Yes. Have they even ballparked possibly what their savings may be? No. I, I mean, we can get that number, Jerry. We can, we can definitely, if they, if, if they find out the size of the units, we can definitely find out, um, based on the CFMs, um, what, what that cost savings would definitely amount to. We can, we yeah, can find that out. Be, it's yeah. going to be a good cost saving. Yes, it will. That's a good point. So that's going to help us out too. Yes. Anybody else? Any council members? Council member um, Nowak? Sorry. Uh, yeah, just building off of Kaminsky basically asked my question just to reiterate that and reinforce that. That I know there's going to be upfront costs associated with this and the bid came over, but we lower our overhead and we control long-term cost growth by committing to this and moving forward. Yeah, yeah. What I'm what I'm hoping to do then, at, again, I will I will check into that further, and I'll try to get a hard number on that, Jerry. Yeah, because that's just something ball, ballpark. It's it's going to be a good amount of savings. I would yes. Make, just on a water bill alone, Paul. Yes. Any other council members? Okay, thank you. Okay, Thanks, so I mean, just just quickly, what we anticipate doing. I know the next board meeting is three weeks away. This definitely was not a not a meeting where we felt comfortable putting in the resolutions along with this conversation. Based on the questions alone, we need to do a little bit more research and do our due diligence um, to let you guys know further how much more we can save the town. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you both. Okay, uh, we'll go through the town board resolution items. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you put them up?
Okay, there we go. So uh, resolution one is the transfer of funds. Any questions on that? And I just want to make a note to the public and to the council members that, um, well, when we get to the warrant, all these things are now on the res or in the agenda as an attachment. But these are spelled out on these transfer of funds. So resolution one and resolution two are transfer of funds. Those are from 2022 to balance the budget. And the resolution 2023-298 is the warrant. Any questions on those? Um, number four is the negative secret declaration for the um, splash car wash on Union Road. Uh, number five is the zoning district change for the splash car wash. Six is the call for public hearing for uh, the local law 2023 to amend the taxation law of the town of Chuktawaga. This is related to last, the last meeting about an amendment to the resolution and it was discussed that we probably should call for a new public hearing before we amend this. So that's what this is for. Uh, number seven is a notice to bidders for asbestos survey and related services for property located at 34 Virginia Road. Eight is amend resolution 2023-278 um, municipal agreement with the Cleveland Hill Union Free School District. And number nine is the same amendment, excuse me, for <coughs> the Chictawaga Central. Any questions? Okay, 10 is award a bid for the electric modifications for the main pump station and the elevator modernization project. 11 is the award a bid for the purchase installation of a new fire alarm system at the Chictawaga main pump station. 12 is another award a bid for the purchase and installation of the large format printer cutter for the sign traffic maintenance division. 13 is the award for the summer camp busing. 14 is authorization to purchase one Chevrolet Tahoe. 15 is to approve the change in vendor for alternative prescription program. 16 is the stop DWI agreement with Erie County. 17 is authorized supervisor to execute intermunicipal agreement between the town of Chittawaga and the city of Buffalo for the use of our police department firing range. Any questions so far? Anybody? 18 is the uh, execute an agreement. Doesn't say what for. I can't read. I'm just looking at the summary. Oh. Okay, that was for the sick time, yes, for one of the employees. Thank you, Jerry. 19 is to authorize A to Youth Organization funding. 20 is the um, authorized su supervisor to execute MOU with the baseball, softball, various organizations. 21 is establish an account for our pave potholes program. 22 is to establish the account for the rehabilitation and reconstruction of our local highway paved New York funds. 23 is to establish the account for the consolidated local streets and improvement program, the CHIPS. 24 is to establish account for extreme winter recovery program. 25 is to appoint the member of the Chictawaga Public Library. 26, the appointment of a laborer in the highway department. 27, appointment of laborer in highway department. 28 is the appointment of a tree trimmer in the highway department. 29 is the youth and recreation hiring. 30 is the travel authorization for the police department. 31 is the hiring and termination of part-time seasonal employees. And 32 is approved the special event, the Flag Day concert. 
Any questions on any of those? Then there's uh, three items under the waiver, suspension of rules. One is to call for a public hearing uh, for the district rezoning of 2460 Clinton Street where Pocketeer Billiards is. <coughs> um, number two is to rescind the resolution for the comprehensive emergency medical services study because uh, the resolution did not, first of all, didn't have the attached agreement. And second, um, the resolution didn't state the dollar amount. So when it showed up on, at my office to sign, I noticed there was no dollar amount in the agreement. So that's why we have to rescind the first resolution. And then the second, re the resolution three award contract for the comprehensive emergency medical services study is the approving the agreement. But I was kind of shocked to see the sticker amount of $88,000 for a study so um, did anybody else know that that was the amount for the study? Chief, can you come up, please? Wait, wait, um, can you raise your hand? I, I need a council member Adam Zach. Yeah. I don't know who else had information regarding this. This was the first time I saw this with a sticker price of 88,000. Did anybody else on the board know about this? Okay, and I'm not sure whose committee this was. I'm pretty sure it wasn't mine, so. Um, Councilman Nowak, did you know about this? Chief, would you like to come up, please? Well, well, wait a minute, I'm asking you a question, Councilman Nowak, did you know about this? this Are you on this committee? There was, an, there was a committee to pick a contract, and yes, I was on it, and it came in $37,000 under the budget we agreed to late last year. I don't remember seeing a budget I for that. I don't remember seeing okay, a budget. Chief, can you <laughs> come on here, explain a little more? <laughs> How did this come about? So, uh, many times I've stood in front of you and spoke about ambulances. Uh, many times, many people have c confronted the board about ambulances. We have a problem with ambulances in the town. I asked, I think back in September, if the board would uh, agree with the idea of convening a committee to uh, write a request for proposals about uh, a study to see what we can do to better uh, service the residents of the town with our ambulance service. The board is responsible, as you guys know, for the ambulance contract. I, you know, I don't know how decisions get made on that, but uh, my personal opinion was that it would be helpful for the board to see from an outside party to understand what is affecting our emergency services when it comes to ambulances and what you can do to possibly make things better. Uh, I got the green light from this board to go ahead and, and create a committee. I put Mike Mazurowski, our emergency manager, in charge of it. Uh, representatives were from the fire districts, from the fire uh, chief's organization, from the EMS board, and uh, we decided on having one council member on that as well. At the time, uh, Brian Nowak was, Councilman Nowak was the representative from the town board on the EMS board. Uh, so it, it made sense to have him be part of this. Uh, the board, that committee developed a request for proposal. I came to the board about four months ago and asked uh, permission to go ahead and put the proposal out. We did that through a resolution that the board approved. Uh, mm -hmm. the, resolu the proposals came in. They were reviewed by the committee. The committee looked at them, discussed the pros and cons of each proposal that came in. There were four of them that came in. Uh, and the committee recommended to the board that the approval of the contract that was in the resolution that was approved last month, or last board meeting. Now I understand that there was uh, omission of the price of it. I'm not sure how or why that happened or why the attachments didn't come over with it. Um, but that's about the timeline on it, and I'm happy to answer any questions. I realize that $88,000 study is, is expensive, but um, we're asking quite a lot to, to, uh, to try to get some answers to solve our problem with ambulances, and, and I know, you know there's been a lot of concern on that, so. Uh, Council Member Nowak, 
Yeah, I, w w when we had discussed this last year, I recall the board agreeing to put a budget of 125,000 as or less as to what we were willing to spend on this. Do you remember that number by chance? I, uh, that I, thrown around. It was part of the ARPA, the whole spreadsheet of what funds are going where. Oh, that so this was ARPA funds that we've looked at mm -hmm. many, many times. Um, you know, I know there was. A request from some of the fire districts on on doing something with ARPA funding. I I, th I think that you know one of the main users of the ambulance service are the fire districts because they respond with the ambulances. And um, I would say that you are doing something to help the fire districts as well by uh, by doing this study. I I think the committee that was put together really did a lot of good work on it. Uh, I mean, if it's something that's just not able to be done then it, it can't be done and hopefully somebody has a better answer for us on how to improve ambulance service in town or, or not. I don't know. You know, it's a little bit outside of my scope. I just uh, trying to answer what I can for you guys. No, understood. I appreciate your answer. Thank you. I don't know. I, I, I think that I'm confused because I thought it was for a study for the emergency management and possibly the, the, the ambulance, but I didn't know the EMS board was going to be doing it because I usually form the committees. I don't know what to tell you. I, yeah. I, I came to the board and asked. And if, you think if it was be back okay. in 2022 that we approved that to go ahead with the 125,000 for ARPA funds? Well, I, yeah. My recollection, don't mean to interrupt, was late 2022. We had a discussion about this at a work session and we were discussing mm -hmm. what an estimated cost would be. I, the number 125,000 was put on the table. And this, this came in under that number. And we had three bidders, and one of them was above this number, and one of them was below. And the middle bidder has got a lot of knowledge of New York State law and some other reasons. And there were some other considerations that went into why they were, the, they were chosen ultimately, but consensus by the committee. But that's how that came about. Council Member Brian, Brian Krause, do we still have this money funded in the ARPA funds? Yeah, see, um, we'll have to do some research on yeah, I, it. Um, I'll have to go back looking through the YouTube and, and through the, to see exactly what the intention was. Maybe sure. there was some miscommunication somewhere. I, I can so, only say that, uh, you know, when we do things like mm -hmm. this through my department, I, I run stuff by the board and, mm -hmm. uh, and I ask and that's what we did. Can, so. Council so, Member in all fairness, I mean, this is the chief is absolutely right. He was given a green light to go acquire bids for this study. He did that. This is no different than coming before us with bids for HVAC or, um, you know, generators or whatnot. He's coming back with the bid, saying, "Hey, this is the bid we're selecting. This is why it's eighty-eight thousand, and now it's up to us as a board to say, yay or nay on it, not to say, hey." We didn't know about this because we did. It was brought up. We gave him the green light to do it. He did his job, and, and Council Member Nowak was part of that committee. So I don't think anybody was doing anything wrong. I think we're just at that spot now. Yeah, it's sticker shock. It's eighty-eight thousand. It's a lot, but I could say the same about the generators right now too. But it's something we need to do as a town and as a board. And I don't think there was any wrongdoing or somebody was trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. He was given the green light. He did nothing wrong. He was part of the committee. He did nothing wrong. The bid is 88000 This is why, like they said, it wasn't the lowest, but it wasn't the highest. It was the best, and this is where we're at now, and now we need to see if the money's part of ARPA or not. I don't think anybody was trying to do anything wrong here. I don't think that was what was saying. It just was confusing. Maybe I had assumed it was just to do a study about ambulance service, which to me, a study is usually around eight to $10,000. We're talking about just the study alone, 88 Studies dollars. are expensive. Look at the traffic studies out there. The study for the 33 on-ramp to put a light there or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I mean, that costs a lot of money. Studies cost money. So, I mean, my, my suggestion is to have um, the EMS board come to the next meeting and present to us what they're going to do. Well, it's not the EMS board doing the study. The I EMS they oh. picked it. Um, uh, so, so the... They're picking the there was a committee form that was head by, headed by Mike Mazurowski to write a request for a proposal for a study. That was presented yes. to the board mm -hmm. to say, are you okay with us 
presenting a request for proposals publicly for this study, which was approved by this board. The request went out and the study, the prices came in and then the committee picked which group. Now that committee was, it, it's an ad hoc committee. It was, it was something that we made up internally within the police department and I mean, if, if every decision needs to be run by the seven people on this board, then just make communicate that with us and we'll try to get something done within the next five years. Sorry. And I do apologize, Councilman Nowak. I do, I do not remember this. It was just a sticker shock to me yeah. to see this. And if the board said to go ahead and look for this and find somebody, then you know what? Then I guess we have to find the money and move forward. And, and if it's too much, I mean, I, may, maybe there's another answer. I, if, if somebody has a better answer to how the town board, I mean, EMS, correct me if I'm wrong, the ambulance service is a responsibility of the town board. Mm -hmm. And nobody has a good answer here. And, I mean, Council Member Noah? Yeah, just to comment on the depth of the study, on the April 25th uh, meeting agenda, there was an attachment along with the resolution that we approved uh, unanimously that went into all the questions that were being asked. And it's talked about the different groups that were being talked to whether we're talking to the commissioners, the chiefs, folks from AMR, all the data collection that had to happen. I mean, it, it gives a good impression of the number of hours that were gonna be taken to do such a thing. And Councilman Polarski spoke to that, that these studies that, and I understand there's some sticker shock associated with it, but when you look at the bids and, and how somebody responds to the bid, you know, you can see that each of the bidders, what do they answer the question, do they not? And that's some of the stuff that was taken into consideration. I, I think if it, if it would help, we could obviously have the person who was selected come and present to the board what they plan on doing to I mean, earn yeah, the $88,000. I, think that would, that would I don't think that's a bad idea. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's actually part of the plan was to at some point introduce this this firm to publicly. So. And maybe we can bring Mr. Bishop sooner rather than later just to introduce himself and talk about this. I, I'm sorry, John. Do, oh, I'm running the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, John. Oh. Good evening, Jack. It's been a while since this, this, this study went through, you know, the board approved it and whatnot, but um, just, just to point your attention to the appendix A, you know, of of the, the agreement, you know, that gives a very detailed uh, itinerary of what this program, you know, what the study will encompass. It's it's very detailed. If if you haven't taken a chance or haven't had an opportunity to look at it, you know, look at appendix A um, of that agreement because it really details, you know, what the police do, you know, what the town's up against as far as the ambulance uh, service what the study will encompass, cost, cost analysis, uh, manpower, um, need. Um, it, it really spells it out in Appendix A. Um, I know it's been some time um, since this, you know, uh, you know, came before everyone, but you might want to take a look at, at that. But that just got submitted this afternoon, right? This um, agreement. Because I didn't see it before. Well, I mean, this was approved. But it wasn't attached at that time. Well, as the chief said, you know, there was an ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. There was a, a sitting board member from the town board on that committee. Um, you know, this was approved back in February of 23. Um, what, what was the, the resolution to awarding the contract? Oh. No. Well, that's what, the, that's what the resolution says. Councilmember Nowak said April. My, my recollection is that in February there was a resolution for this. I think that put out the that put out the bid, and we awarded the bid in okay. the right. second meeting of April. And at that time, there was an attachment along with the resolution that explained the the bid specifications in excruciating detail. The no, the February one. Uh, on the April, April one, when no, we no, there was when, no attachment on the April because I I noticed that I didn't see any attachment. On uh, I will forward that after this meeting. Okay, so it might have been submitted after. It was submitted before? 
there was no attachment, no agreement. We were approving it, and I, I thought it was odd, but. Chris, Chris. Do we know approximately how long this will take to study? The timeline was given somewhere around nine to 12 months, the last I recall. Okay, so anyway, I think I'll, our questions are answered for now. Mike's got oh, a question. Council Member Jasinski. Brian, what you do isn't in question. You do a fabulous job. I'm sure everybody will agree to that. I think what's in question is that Christine and I sit on the police committee, and this is just news to us today, so we're just a little set back. I, I'm not opposed to the dollar sure. amount. I, you know, Brian, Mr. Polarski's right. These studies cost a lot of money, but I think that we've said this in the past that this board lacks transparency. I mean, I've tried to call Mr. Nowak many times in the past, and he's yet to return my calls. Police is my committee as well as Council Member Adam Zaks. So this is news to us. Uh, in regards to the knowledge to the board, we have a resolution that was voted for on February that called for bidders, and we approved one in the end of April. So I don't know how you get any more transparent than a discussion in 22 and then two votes on something. Anybody else have any questions for the chief while he's here? Thank you, chief. I appreciate it. Okay, I think that's all the resolution items. Uh, we do have to go into an executive session. I'll make a motion because it's pretty long. Wait, hold on. <laughs> uh, to discuss the medical and employment history and possible discipline of particular persons, TCEA and Captains, lieutenants, and PBA collective negotiations and attorney client privilege. So, could I get a second on that? Councilmember Kaminsky, or Jasinski, I'm sorry, he had his hand up first. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, we will return at 7 o'clock. <laughs>